नगरा हैले सालागरा रोडु रोलर मुंदडु गई सागरा लागरा हैले आवाग बेशत सरकारा इवाग बरगला बरे थिम्बर सर Vocês <laughs> Adalah yang ada warga yang ramai terdalam sari gani malik terma tera. Ia sanggulai le. Ah, one sangga. Ia sangga solp jabar sahatan dera. Nini barapa. Nini yen bek solat bek, lari beka. Ah, nini dud beka, nini kar beka. Nadi. Ia terdiri dari ille sangga atni gulai beli dan tena. Wando. Cidera marta dera. Rochurai motor la shikar la kuku du pochin data. Rochurai motor la shikar la kuku du pochin data. Pula panu pali tova gavine dos ta danta. Lagara hai le sa lagara. It's an unbelievable scale of devastation that you see. And it is very ironic that one of the men who has made money out of this type of plunder was also the uh, health minister of the state. Kadang-kadang ni orang tu juga pesi pesi kalau, iya, ini, ini mana, ini, ini mana, kadang-kadang ni mana, 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 tu beri, mana tu, dor-dori, orang tu malah itu dapat juga. Ya, bawa tu, kalau bandar tu market pun tu, Kerala tu, Tamil Nadu tu, semua ini tu boleh tu pasal tu. Yang ni, wajar change, gadi change, akal mula walau boleh buat la, ini mungkin tu, paling saya bawa kereta macam ni, rokai tu ni dah, sih kula kalau tu, kaya kula baru tu. Ya, wo gaya bis dengan la dua la mana guru wakkam ada, ah gaya dengan la mungkin la wakkam ada, ini gaya. I have been revisiting hospital very often. Maybe I've gone there more than 15 to 16 times ever since I left hospital in 1983. And what I see is gradual deterioration of the town from a serene small town into a dusty, polluted place where you don't even want to live in these days. I remember there used to be one dam called Nagajari Dam. This was in part of Sandor. It was one of the da smallest, uh, smallest dams in the Thalo, which I remember we playing in that dam with crystal clear water. But you go there now, you pick the water and you let the water go. All you find is dark, hematite, magnetite, dust residue in your hand. Then one saw the greed. One saw that graveyards were being dynamited. Uh, because uh, to take out iron ore, so no respect for the dead. It's always profit versus people, isn't it? Because it's always politicians making a decision in cohorts with the executive, of course, and with others who are not taking a whatever proactive enough stance and just going ahead with this. And I think the mining case in Bellari is a clear cut example of where we have arrived in our politics. Mandu guru itu kepada ingat lah. Even religion is being bent to serve the interest of the money. So he won't mind destroying a temple and joining a religious party if it serves his purpose. Kerit itu tiap apa, in Tirupati, you know, when they did so, I felt 
my father had taken me when I was very young to Tirupati for my Upanayanam thread ceremony. I can no longer go and do namaskar to Timopa because he is wearing the kirit given by the gun, <laughs> these dirty miners, you know. They have corrupted everything. They have corrupted Tirupati too. It came from the heart of the earth. A stone so rare, men will do anything to possess it. Between March and October 2010, as we were making this documentary film, me and my colleagues made dozens of attempts to contact a few individuals unsuccessfully. We were very keen to do an interview with the senior leader of the Bharatiya Janata Party, Mrs. Sushma Swaraj. I kept calling her. In the months of August and September alone, I must have made at least 20 telephone calls to her residence and her office. Various members of her staff, they answered my phone, Sri Bhushan, Sri Sanjay, Srimati Ritu, Sri Om Prakash, among others, and all of them said they would get back to me. They never did. Like all politicians, they never say no, but they never get back to you. I, I finally wrote this letter to Mrs. Swaraj and I said, Sushma Ji, I've known you for more than a decade. I've interviewed you a number of times of tel on television. You've met me on many occasions. Please give me a few minutes of your valuable time. I just want to ask you a few questions. I'm making this documentary film on iron ore mining in Bellari. But there was no response. I got through to the spokesperson of the Bharatiya Janata Party, Nirmala Sitaraman. She too initially said, yes, I'll give you time, I'll give you an interview. But she too finally said that, no, I'm sorry, I won't be able to meet you. In fact, she sent me a short message on my mobile phone. And, 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 and in fact, she wrote to me saying, sorry, Parinjoy ji, I wish not to hold up your schedule as I've requested earlier too. Please, you should go ahead with your work. She said, don't wait for my time. Unfortunately, although I understand you're asking for only a brief interview, it just, just doesn't seem to work out within my schedule. This was uh, a short message that Nirmala Sitaraman, spokesperson of the Bharati Janata Party, sent me on my mobile. We tried. <laughs> As I came back from Bellari, those were the two uh, predominant images in my mind. The very artificial blue of Janardhan Reddy's indoor swimming pool and the equally surreal red of the poison-laced uh, reservoirs in the villages of Bellari. They are going to empty the whole thing within a few years and India will have no iron ore. This is a crime. And the crime has been accepted us by us now because it's a, it has become a part of the democratic process. The point is that there's enough and more evidence, which as you know, has come out with what, even what an ombudsman like the Loka Yukta in Karnataka has looked into. I mean, the man had to resign because the government wouldn't uh, take action and cognizance of his report. Of course, he's now been asked to come back again. But the point is that there is enough and more evidence to move against these people, to stop the madness that is taking place in Bellari and Hospit and Anandpur and in other regions in the country. This is not an isolated thing. Mining scandals are taking place in Jharkhand, Orissa. It's just going to get worse and worse. And once we legitimize this, and if we legitimize this um, nexus between politicians and the mining lobby, 
as openly and as overtly as this, then I don't think uh, you know there's going to be any question of getting any lawbreaker you know facing justice. They, they, they're just going to get away scot free. Good indicator is the Dalit Sangar Samitis, which are all factionalized, are coming together in Karnataka. They are very, very potent force in Bellari and in that belt. If they all come together and fight this mining issue, because Dalits are the worst affected because of mining, and we don't need guns for that. The people power is sufficient. You see, that's the kind of future I, I am hoping for. I have a very uh, dismal view of the long arm of the law. It doesn't reach the people who should be reached. The problem that we need to address ourselves to is much more fundamental, you know. We just, we just have to begin to build the political all over again. That is really where the, the, the problem is. Because today you will handle the Gali brothers, uh, you will handle uh, Jagan Mohan Reddy, uh, but um, who is free of, 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 of this kind of uh, allegation? You know, I mean, name 10 who are in political power, but are completely free of, uh, you know, any kind of taint. Again, the question before us is the same thing, that, you know, okay, we, we are uh, supporting a new state, and, and mining is a big part of the problems of Telangana as well, and Jagan Mohan Reddy is involved in this, <coughs> on this side of uh, the state as well. But uh, what is the alternative? By the middle of 2011, the ground seemed to be slipping under the feet of the Gali Reddy brothers. Their mentors were deserting them. On the 25th of July 2011, a few days before he retired, Justice Hegde presented his final report on illegal mining in Bellari, which raised a political storm, not just in Karnataka, but in the whole of India. The report indicted Janardhan Reddy, refuted his contention that he was not involved in illegal mining in the state of Karnataka, and alleged that he had laundered money through international tax havens. The Supreme Court of India clamped down on Bellari's private mine owners. Justice Hegde's report sharply indicted Chief Minister Yadurappa as well and claimed that his family members had directly benefited from funds provided by iron ore miners. Kicking and screaming, Yadurappa reluctantly resigned from his position on the 31st of July. More than a month later, on the 5th of September 2011, the Central Bureau of Investigation, India's premier police agency, arrested Gali Janardhan Reddy on the basis of a first information report that had been lodged more than 18 months earlier in December 2009. His brother-in-law, B.V. Srinivas Reddy, managing director of Obalapura Mining Company, was arrested with him. The two were taken from Bellari in Karnataka and lodged in a jail in Hyderabad, the capital of Andhra Pradesh. Though he had been given ample opportunity to cover his tracks, CBI officers were taken aback with the wealth they found with him and his associates. Rolls Royce Phantom, Land Cruiser, Range Rover, BMW, Huge amounts in cash, tens of kilograms of precious metals, jewelry, and even a golden throne reminiscent of a medieval monarch. The long arm of the law had finally caught up with Gali Janardhan Reddy.
ಖನಿಜ ಬೆಟ್ಟದ ಮಡಿಲಲ್ಲಿರುವ ಪಾರ್ವತಿ ಸುತನ ಮಂದಿರ ಖನಿಜ ಬೆಟ್ಟದ ಮಡಿಲಲ್ಲಿರುವ ಪಾರ್ವತಿ ಸುತನ ಮಂದಿರ ಕಾಳ ಮಂದೆಟ್ಟ ದುಃಖ ಮಾಡಲಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಮಕ್ಕಣ್ಣ ಮಳೆ ಕರುಣಿಸು ಗಂಡ ಎಂಡರ ಕೂಡಿ ಗಾಣಿಗರು ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಪುಂಡೆಂಡು ಕದ್ದರಯ್ಯ ಬಂಡಾಟ ಹಚ್ಚೇತು ಬಾಪೂರಿ ಮಳೆ ರಾಯ ದಂಡೆದ್ದು ಮಳೆ ಕರುಣಿಸು ಬಂಡಾಟ ಹಚ್ಚೇತು ಬಾಪೂರಿ ಮಳೆ ರಾಯ ಮುಖ್ಯಮಂತ್ರಿ ಲಕ್ಷ ಪೆಟ್ಟ ರಾಜಭವನಕ್ಕೆ ರಡಿ ಅನ್ನರ ಸುನಾಮಿ ದೆಬ್ಬಕು ಭೂತಲ್ಲೇ ಕಂಪಿಂಚಿನದಿ 